Hello and welcome to the final episode in this series of Practical Caravan TV, the show all about buying, owning and enjoying your caravan. Now for the final episode, you might expect us to do something a little bit special. And in fact, we've done just that. We've been all the way to the Arctic Circle for you. But before that, how about this? It's the new Sterling Eccles 510 and it's time for me to take a closer look. These days, a fixed bed is absolutely de rigueur for a couple's caravan, but that does tend to mean a pretty large caravan and a pretty heavy one too. So what do you do if you've only got a fairly small tow car? Well, how about something like this? It's the Sterling Eccles 510. It's compact at less than seven meters, thanks to some clever packaging, and it weighs just over 1,400 kilos. It costs less than 20,000 pounds, but does bring with it a fair amount of kit. We've got an AKS hitch stabiliser, a front panoramic sunroof and alloy wheels. This particular van is fitted with the Lux Pack, which brings along such useful additions as an external locker to access the space under the bed and a gas barbecue point. It's a really good looking van too. As ever with Sterling, it's pretty stylish, helped by the carbon fibre effect front gas locker and the modern decals on the sides. It looks pretty good inside too, and this one should be fairly warm because it's fitted with the optional Aldi wet central heating as that badge on the back shows. Adding the Aldi wet central heating and the Lux Pack does take the price from under £19,000 to over 20, but this does feel like a luxurious place to sit. It feels like a modern one too. It's lovely and light and these fabrics feel very youthful compared to a lot of caravans. There's also almost no wood effect in here, just this piano black along the bottoms of the cupboards. Everywhere else it's hessian or white, so it really does feel fresh and clean. The kit levels are good as well as that sunroof. We've got a stereo, we've got this front chest which has a pull-out coffee table above. The lighting is really thoughtfully done as well. We've got halo lighting above the cupboards, and these spotlights in each corner, which means that when this is made up as a double bed, because really these sofas are too short to be used as singles, everyone will have a reading light. Although it's a relatively small caravan, the 510 really does have bags of storage space. On the near side here, we've got this fantastic dresser with two lockers above, these rather neat little shelves, which are ideal for putting knickknacks on once you're pitched on site, and beneath it, two cupboards and a drawer. Although it's set a bit too low to be used as workspace for the kitchen, it is the perfect height for your TV, so you can sit back in the lounge and relax and your telly will be just the right height for you to watch. So it's no surprise to see the relevant sockets you'll need for your telly there. It's also quite neat that there's a hatchway through to the bedroom, so you can simply spin round your telly and watch it from there too. Now over on the off side of the van, well there's a really well equipped kitchen area. We've got a refrigerator, and a couple of good drawers here, one for utensils and one for cutlery. There's also a lift up flap at the front here should you need additional worktop space and a really good sized sink. As you might expect, there's a dual fuel hob and a separate oven and grill too. And I really like this rather nice illuminated splashback. It is a shame there's just the one socket in this room, but then there are two in the lounge and of course that one on the sideboard. So plenty of points to charge up your various devices. It's good to see the microwave sighted over the sink rather than the hob, and of course there's a cupboard on either side of it too. At the back here is where the real magic happens, and it's the reason why this is such a compact caravan, because this is a brilliant bit of packaging. For a start there's this bed. It's well over six feet long and more than four feet wide, which is a really fantastic size. We've got our own reading lights and shelves for each bed occupant, it's really comfortable too. The only slight flaw is the fact that one of you is going to have to climb over the other through this fairly narrow gap if you need to use the loo at night. There are four overhead lockers as well and of course a massive space underneath the bed for storing all your gear. That's also where you'll find the spare wheel but this van does have one touch that I'm particularly pleased to find. There's an access flap to use that storage space which means that when the bed is made you don't have to lift it up each time you need to get something out from underneath. There's more storage to be found here too. Over on the offside wall, well that's where you'll find a full height wardrobe. And that's also where you'll find the storage for the lounge table. There's even in this space 
a little vanity unit so you can brush your teeth before jumping into bed at night. It's got a mirror and downlighters above and a small cabinet beneath, along with a radiator for the Aldi wet central heating and some shelves. But where's the loo? Well, it's behind this door here. Although small, the fully lined wet room is cleverly laid out. The shower tray acts as the floor and there's a molded soap dish, plus a water saving Eco Camel Orbit shower head and a shelf above the electric flush loo. Unusually, there's even a bifold door to keep the loo dry while you have your shower. I've seen this layout before in the Sprite, but if anything, it works even better with that clean, modern interior in the Sterling, which gives much more of a sense of space. If you're not particularly agile, that bed could be an issue. And if you prefer to use the facilities of the van, then maybe you'll find that wet room a little bit small. If so, it could be worth looking at rivals such as the Bailey Pegasus Modena. But then, although cheaper, that really doesn't have this sterling sense of luxury. For me, it's a really fantastic layout and really is proof that sometimes the best things do come in small packages. The Ford Cougar has always been a popular tow car. Last year, Ford updated its mid-sized SUV with new looks inside and out and a new infotainment system. We're driving the 178 brake horsepower diesel 4x4. Cougar curb weights range from 1,579 kilograms to 1,716 kilos, depending on the engine, transmission and whether the car is front or four-wheel drive. Our test car is the heaviest model in the range, with the most powerful diesel engine, power going to all four wheels and the power shift automatic transmission. The power shift gearbox can be a little slow to change down unless you put it in sport mode, but once in the right gear, the Cougar accelerates strongly. We've matched it to a Swift Expression 646 with a mass in running order of 1,453 kilograms, and it can pull that caravan from 30 to 60 miles per hour in a brisk 12.1 seconds. However, the Ford struggled in the lane change test hampered by its winter tyres on one of the first warm days of spring. We'd be surprised if it wouldn't have performed much better on summer rubber. In a straight line though, we've no complaints about the Ford stability. At 60 miles per hour, it feels very secure. Perhaps our ST-Line test car sport suspension helps, but it does make for a rather firm and jittery ride. Inside, the driver has a high and comfortable driving position, and ST-Line models are well equipped. Most of the controls are well laid out, but the way the touchscreen is recessed makes it harder to use than it should be. In the back of the car, there's room for adults to be reasonably comfortable, and only a small transmission tunnel. The back seats recline, but don't move back and forth as they do in some rivals. Boot space is limited compared with some competitors. With the rear seats upright, there's 456 litres for bags. That's cramped compared with the Honda CRV's 589 litres. Fold the back seats down and the capacity increases to 1,653 litres. The Cougar is a decent all-rounder, but there are many other strong contenders in this class. In its favour, the Ford is a stable tow car and an entertaining solo drive, but a more settled ride and a bigger boot would make a good car an even better one. And with that, we come to the end of part one. But don't go away, because we'll be back in just a few minutes with plenty more caravanning goodness. I'll see you after the break. <laughs>